Demas is his name. That's a strange name, isn't it? Real. No. But you know what? They would probably say that, uh, oh, they would probably say that Jordan, Jordan is a strange name. Why would you name a guy after a river? Because Jordan was a river. In, what? In Israel, Jordan is a river. Why, why would you name a guy after a river? So if you, so we look at the name Nicodemus and we think, boy, that's kind of a weird name. But it wasn't. It wasn't a weird name. Um, right. It had the name. Yeah, you. Yeah. You bring it up here. Yes. All right. Listen up. Follow along. Starting with the first verse. It says, There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. And this man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you, our teacher, come from God. For no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. So Nicodemus was what they called a Pharisee. A Pharisee was one of the rulers. They were the big guys in the church. They were the, they were the big guys. And they thought a whole lot about themselves. They thought they were special and they thought they were important. Uh, but you're going to have to sit up. Okay? Unless you want to go over to this chair or if you want to come up to this chair. Otherwise, because you're... You're kicking favor, and I don't think she likes that too much. Okay, well, you kept moving them, so. All right. So, now the, the leaders of the synagogue, which is what they called the church, they didn't like Jesus too much because they had this way of doing things, and it worked out pretty well for them. They got a lot of power, and they got a lot of importance, and they got a lot of money doing what they were doing. And Jesus came in and he upset the apple cart. You know what that means to upset the apple cart? Well, it means you've got everything all nice and orderly and somebody comes in and just goes and just throws everything away. And to them, Jesus was upsetting the apple cart. He wasn't doing the things the way they did it. Do I have to move you? Yes, you. Do I have to move you? Keep your hands off your sister. But see, Nicodemus, even though he was one of those rulers, he said, wait a minute. There's something to this guy, Jesus. There's something to him. And so he, it wasn't very popular. All right, let me, let me ask you this. Who likes sports? Who likes Who likes football? Who likes baseball? Who likes basketball? Okay, more hands went up. Let's go with basketball. Put your hands down. Who here is a Phoenix Suns fan? Only one. Two. Three. I've been a Suns fan since I was a little boy. Who's a who's a fan of another team? LA Lakers. LA Lakers? I used to like you. <laughs> who's your favorite basketball team? I don't know. Well, that's what I said. Who's a fan of it? Are you a fan of a different team than the Suns? Yeah. What do you? What team do you like? Oh well, I'm talking basketball team. Only basketball. Only basketball teams. Yes. Nathaniel, who do you like? He's not a pro basketball player. Yeah. yeah. Later. I'm a basketball player. Round guys. Huh? Round guys. Did not anybody? The Bulls. The who? The Bulls. The Bulls. Oh my goodness. You you need to go talk to Santa Claus. <laughs> the guy. There's a guy out here in, in church today Santa that Claus looks like Santa Claus. Santa Claus. He looks like he looks like Santa Claus, and he's he's from Chicago, so he's a Bulls fan. Did you have your hand up? No. All right. All right. You can even listen. Imagine this: all of your friends are Suns fans, and if you're not a Suns fan, they're gonna look at you and laugh at you. And they're going to say, you're a loser. You're a 
You're a loser. <laughs> oh, I was, if you're coming, you think that one's going to get on the video, right? Me going like this? Oh, yeah, I would, I would, I would just take the video. I would just take the video. Now, if you, were not, if you were not a Suns fan, would you go into that group of friends? No. Let's not see that anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Would you go into a group of friends and say, I'm not a Suns fan? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Now, some of you guys would do that. But other you guys, if you, wanna, if you want to uh, not get made fun of, you're just going to keep your mouth shut. Well, that's how Nicodemus was. Nicodemus... For him to say, hey, I like this Jesus guy, if, he, if the other Pharisees knew that he liked Jesus, they would laugh at him and they would say, there's something wrong with you. You know what? You can't be a Pharisee anymore. We're not going to let you be one of us anymore because what? you like this Jesus guy. A lot of people do. You're going to find that out that a lot of people are going to, if you don't think like I do, then we're not going to have anything to do with you. And so that's how it was with the Pharisees. If they had already decided that nobody likes this Jesus guy, he's not. That's people do that all the time. They say I'm the opinion maker, and if you don't follow me, then we're going to all laugh at you, and we're going to say that you're that you're dumb and that you you can't hang with us anymore. See, I could have done that with Jordan. Jordan said, I'm a Lakers fan. I've hated the Lakers ever since I was a little boy. Reals? For reals. What? I have always hated the Lakers. But you wow. did, you did ever, say, ever, ever since I was seven years old. That was a long time ago. I hated the Lakers. Oh, I hated them. Because I never liked them. I never, I just didn't like the way they played. But, you see, I could so I could sit here and I could I could put Jordan down and say Jordan's dumb. He doesn't like the Suns. Jordan's dumb. He likes the Lakers. Jordan could say Dave's dumb. He likes the Suns. He doesn't like the Lakers. He's dumb. People do that all the time. That's what the Pharisees were doing. They all decided they didn't like Jesus. And if anybody said I like him, they'd say you can't be one of us anymore. We're not going to let you be one of us. We're not going to let you play with us anymore. And so Nicodemus needed to keep it secret that he liked this Jesus. And so he came to Jesus at night when nobody else was around. He came to Jesus and he said, Jesus, I'm sure nobody's watching me. I don't want anybody, I don't want anybody to see me talking to Jesus here. What do I need to do to have eternal life? How's, how, does, how does this work, Jesus? He came, to, he came to Jesus and he said, Rabbi, which means teacher, says, we know that you're a teacher come from God. Nobody can do this stuff that you do except that God is with him. Now they decided that this guy was a demon. They decided that Jesus was of the devil. And so here's Nicodemus saying, we know, we know you're actually from God. So he's got he's to keep it secret. We know that you're actually from God. Because nobody can... Make sure I'm not being watched here. Nobody can do the things that you do unless God is with him. So Jesus told him, though, you cannot see the kingdom of God unless you're born again. What does that mean? Born again. I am born again. Did I ever die? No, no. I've been living ever since I was born. But so what's this born what's this born again that I'm talking about then? What do you think? That's part of it. You see, whenever we're born, let me ask you this. Josiah, Nathaniel, I'm going to ask you guys because you got a baby brother at home. Um, what does ba What do babies do best? Uh, cry. Cry. Jordan, you know this, right? Cry. 
Yeah, they do. <laughs> <laughs> they do. Yeah, completely. Look, a baby wants what a baby wants, and if a baby doesn't get what a baby wants, a baby cries. And if you don't give the baby what he wants, he's going to cry even louder. Uh, maybe and a baby will... is going to make a scene. You have to give him a toy. If, you take, if I take a toy away from a baby, the baby's going to go, if you're If you're out in public, and you take something from a baby, a baby doesn't care if you're in public and everybody else is watching. All a baby knows is what he wants. And that's how we are. When we're born, it's all about us. I want, I want, I want, I want, I want. And if you don't give me what I want, I'm going to make such a fit that it's going to embarrass everybody. So, people are selfish. Some people will steal. Some people will lie to get more. Some people will even kill to get more. But when you are born again, you are no longer about yourself. Who are you about, huh? Um, I cry when I fix my hair when I birth me. That's right, because it hurts, doesn't it? Yeah. 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 Who are you about then when you become Christian? You don't look after what you want. Who do you look after? What God wants. What God wants becomes more important than what you want. When that happens, you are born again. Because you no longer uh, are looking out for what you want. It's like you've become a completely different person. Now, I've known people who didn't serve God. And... How, how many people know? How many people know uh, Brother Dunn? Brother Dunn, he's a he's a guy in our church, and he's got a very strong, powerful voice. He's an older guy, and when before Dunn knew Jesus, he was mean. He was real mean to people. He's not that way anymore. He's changed. When we come to Jesus, faith. When we come to Jesus, we have to change. We're no longer out for ourselves anymore. We're gonna now we're saying, hey, what does Jesus want? Emma, is that your Bible? Is that your Bible? I didn't mark you down for a Bible, girl. Before we leave, make sure you get a spin. Amaya, do you have a Bible too? I didn't mark you down either. I didn't see you guys' Bibles. So, Amaya and Let's see. All right, both you girls, before you leave, come see me, okay? Before before you go home. All right, listen. That's what it means to be born again. It's almost like you're a completely different person. When you were born the first time, Faith. Faith. When you were born the first time, you're all about yourself. But when you're born again, now you're all about Jesus. What does Jesus want for my life? What does Jesus want me to do? What Jesus wants becomes more important than what you want. And that's what, now Nicodemus, that freaked him out. He said to Jesus, he said, how can a man be born when he's old? Can he go back inside his mom's womb and be born? Can he go back inside his mom's tummy? No. That would be kind of hard. That would be kind of hard because my mom's in heaven. I can't go back inside. I'm too big. I couldn't fit inside my mom's tummy. I'm bigger than my mom was. And Jesus said, unless you are born of the water and spirit, you, you cannot enter the kingdom of God. You see, there's a spirit in each of us. That spirit directs us to do what we do. When the spirit is a flesh spirit, like the one I'm seeing back there, when the spirit is a flesh spirit, it calls, it calls all attention to itself. 
But when this, when this, when you're controlled by the Spirit of God, this is your chair. When you're controlled by the Spirit of God, you're no longer trying to draw attention to yourself. You want to draw all attention to God. That's how God wants us to live. That is pleasing to God. When we are trying to do what He wants, what He, what he wants is more important than what we want. That is pleasing to God. I gotta, I gotta quit here soon because Mr. James is gonna be done soon. But actually, I shouldn't have shut my Bible. I want everybody to who has a Bible in John chapter three to go down to the 16th verse. I already have the added. Excellent. Because that is a, that is probably one of the more important verses of the Bible. John 3:16. It says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whoever believes in Him should not perish, or means to, should not die, but have everlasting life. Let me read it in another version. <coughs> Maybe I could read it in the Dave version. Okay, so if I go to John 3.16... It says here, For this is how God loved the world. He gave His one and only Son so that everyone who believes in Him will not perish but have everlasting life. You know what it means to perish? No. To, die. to die. It means to die. You see, when I tell you that what God wants should be more important than what you want, God isn't, he's not making us do something that he didn't already do himself. Which of you would give up your brother or sister to die? I think you're both lying. I'm not. I think you're lying. I'm not. I'm not. I, think, I think you're lying. You're trying to be cute. Because not one of us would give up a family member to die, especially to die for somebody who doesn't deserve it. But God was looking at what we need more than what he wanted. Of course, God would want to keep his son, right? Why would God not want to keep his son? But he chose to give up his only son so that we might have life. You see, what's the penalty for sin? Jonathan, what's the penalty for sin? What's the penalty for sin? You're sitting there clicking, but you're not uh, paying attention. What's the penalty for sin, Jordan? Death. Death. So Jesus took the punishment that we should have had. Any of you ever taken the punishment for your brother or sister? Yeah. No. Without? Yeah. Willingly? Willingly? Or was it by mistake? And you, they got in trouble and you said, I did it instead of them. Not too many people do that. Jesus did. The penalty was death. And Jesus said, I'll take that. You see, how many how many people want to die? Not many. No. There's very few. We all love to live. Jesus chose to lay down. So even Jesus did the same thing. He, he looked at what others needed. We all needed to be saved because we had a death penalty for our sin. And Jesus said, even though I would rather live... It's more needful for you that I die. I need to give up my life for you. And so he did. If you have a Bible, and if it's not already highlighted in your Bible, it'd, be, it'd probably be a good idea to highlight that verse in your Bible, John 3.16. Very important verse. It's why we serve God. Because God gave Jesus for us. God gave Jesus so that we could live instead of die. All right. Let's all bow our heads, close our eyes.
Father, we thank you for this time. We thank you for the gift that you gave to us. And Father, you said that we need to be born again, which means we need to stop doing what we want to do and start doing what you want us to do instead. That we need to put your desires before our own. You don't ask us to do that without having done it first. And you did, Lord. You gave up your own son, Jesus, for us. And we are so grateful that, Lord, we want to live for you. We want to do just like you did. We want to put your desires first in front of our own. And I ask you that you would help each of us to live like that. That we would put your desires first. Lord, that we truly would be born again. That we would be a new person. No longer serving ourselves, but serving you. In Jesus' name we ask. Amen. Amen. Amen.